few weeks ago I put together a video that showed a a problem I had with my function generator that was masquerading itself as you know what looked like a trigger stability issue and uh, so I decided to take a closer look at what was going on with my function generator and uh, in that video we discovered that there was a high frequency oscillation kind of riding on top of uh, this waveform and if we uh, if we zoom in far enough you can actually uh, start to see that okay and now you can kind of see you know, that oscillation in here. Let me turn the intensity up here a little bit. You can actually see that oscillation here, kind of riding on top of that uh, that waveform. So, uh, turns out that's about 700 or 700 kilohertz or so, and riding on top of you know, this. Uh, let's kind of turn this back down here. Riding on top of my normal waveform. That's what's causing the uh, thing to trigger. Because sometimes we're triggering on you know that, that little edge, kind of going up or down, and that's why it looks like it's a double trigger here. So I wanted to take a look and figure out what was causing, you know, where's that 700 megahertz or 700 kilohertz signal coming from. So one of the things I did is I took this signal and I stuck it into uh, my spectrum analyzer up here. Let's kind of do that. And uh, so there's my 700 kilohertz signal uh, sitting right here. Uh, that marker is kind of just about sitting on it there. Okay. And uh, I'm going to bring the signal generator up in frequency, so I've got a signal kind of sitting in here along with it. Okay, and uh, so the signal that I'm moving around is close to the center there. That's kind of just the sine wave output of my, uh, my signal generator. And you'll notice that that 700 kilohertz is not moving. All right, if I bring the signal down, you can see the second harmonic of my sig gen coming in there. Okay, the other thing I noticed was that if I adjusted the amplitude of the signal on the signal generator, you'll notice my signal amplitude is going up. Or coming down, but that 700 megahertz signal is not. Okay, so that gives some clues to where it might be. Um, also, if I hit the output attenuator on my signal generator, I add 10 dB in here. You'll notice that both my signal and the 700 kilohertz tone dropped. So what that tells me is that the um, the signal the signal is being introduced uh, into uh, the signal path sometime after my amplitude control but sometime before my attenuator so that kind of helps narrow it down All right. so what we did is we'll take a look at the uh, block diagram here let me see if I can uh, find that in my paperwork here so if we uh, kind of scroll back in my paperwork here to the block diagram of uh, the signal generator here we go what we can see is that Let's see if we get this focused in here. So we can see that there's my amplitude control right here. Then I basically go through a buffer amp and a final amp and then the attenuator. So we know the attenuator was affecting the signal, so it definitely appeared in here, but the amplitude control did not. So it's somewhere in this buffer amplifier is where this 700 kilohertz tone's coming in. So we go to the buffer amplifier schematic. That's this one right here. Okay, we start taking a look through here, and basically it's a uh, an analog device's AD8047 uh, buffer amp, unity gain buffer amp that's driving this uh, EL2030 uh, amplifier that's driving a push-pull uh, stage. So I started poking around in here, and uh, what I found was kind of interesting. Uh, I first started, you know, kind of poking around looking for that signal, and I started looking at the supply rails, and uh, what I found was that the 17 volt supply rail has got is the thing that's got this oscillation on it. So if we kind of look over in the, so this is the signal generator we've been talking about here. This is a, it's a liter uh, LG LG 1311. This is the signal generator I've been playing with. So if we look inside here, if I uh, go and look at the 17 volt rail, I actually see a couple of problems. Now this final buffer amplifier, that's the buffer. That's the final amp. These are the two push-pull transistors. And then also a lot of the power supply circuit is on here as well. Okay, There's a little vo voltage regulator back here. We're going to kind of get into that. But So right over here is my test point for 17, the 17-volt 17 rail. This actually uses a, a dual supply. It's a plus and minus 17-volt supply. So if I take my probe and I probe on uh, that 17-volt test point here. Let me kind of get out of the way so I can see. It's actually running at about 18.6 volts. So it's running a little high. And I previously went and played with the adjustment for it here and wasn't able to make a change. So, or not a significant change. So something's odd with the power supply. 
So also what we can do is uh, I'll take and probe a 17 volt power supply with my probe here and take a look up on the scope. So if I go and probe that right here at the same spot, so if I look over the camera so I can see what I'm doing, I look up here on the scope, so that's 50 millivolts of division, so that's like, you know, 200 millivolt peak to peak, and you can see I've got the cursor set up there, 700 kilohertz oscillation. So, well, that's weird. Why is that doing that? Okay. And uh, so looking through the circuit here, we had to we, now we have to go look at uh, what's going on with the power supply. So if we scoot over to my power supply schematic, and that's this guy right here, let's take a look at this power supply. So basically I've got, uh, I'm going to pull this up here where you can see it. So I've got uh, my power transformer coming into a bridge rectifier, a couple of caps. Those two are coming down to this guy here, which is uh, my dual... Uh, voltage regulator. So it's basically a little Mitsubishi part, an M5230L, and that's a, a voltage regulator, a, a tracking voltage regulator that do plus and minus volt, uh, you know, a supply, a split supply. And they've surrounded it with a couple of higher uh, current pass transistors to make it a higher current uh, supply. So basically what it does, it's got a, uh, you know, a, a, an internal reference and it's, you're comparing this voltage fed back from, you know, the positive rail divided down, compared against the reference, and it adjusts its output. This one's a little bit unique in that instead of just adjusting the output here, the way they've employed these transistors is that uh, we're just, the output of the regulator is just going into a simple resistive load. So the higher that voltage goes, we're just going to, you know, jump put a voltage across that resistor, but also we, we change the amount of current that goes into that resistor. That's going to pull current through the base of the pass transistor and then the output through the collector we can see comes up over here and that's what the output is here. So that's the feedback mechanism. As the, uh, as the voltage was a little bit too low, this voltage would come up which would push push more current through the 500, this 560 ohm resistor which will pull more base current which will turn the transistor on harder to bring that voltage up. So that's kind of the loop that works. And then the negative half just kind of you know, tries to mirror that you know, below ground. So, um, but what's interesting now is, well, let's take a look and see what's going on, for example, at, uh, at this output, right? And uh, so if we take a look at that with the scope, okay, that's actually uh, kind of buried way over here. I'm going to uh, actually stick a clip lead on my probe here, make it easier to kind of go do that. And uh, so let's stick the clip lead on my probes. Now I've got the clip lead on there. And uh, there's actually a resistor right down there next to the, this is actually the voltage regulator I see right here. It's a little 8-pin single inline package. Glad I didn't have to replace that because it might be tough to find. So let me reach in here and, uh, and grab this voltage. Okay, this is the, I'm grabbing the voltage that's right here at pin 6. Okay, and we take a look up here at the scope and adjust my scale down here. And uh, man, look at that thing. This is, uh, now I'm at uh, two volts of division here, okay, and that thing is just singing with this kind of like, you know, relaxation oscillation, this motor boating, if you will, and that's two, four, six, eight, ten, like 12 volt peaks that we're getting there. So what that's telling me is that this loop that we've got going on here is kind of going from nearly off, okay, you know, down here, because that's where ground is, right? So if I look at ground, oh, actually, I'm, I'm, I'm AC coupled here. Let me go and do this DC coupled so I can actually see that there's ground. Let me actually move ground down a little bit, say down to there, okay? And uh, and let me move my trigger point. Okay, here we go. So I can actually see that from ground right there, this thing is swinging from ground about 12 volts up. So it's kind of like, you know, this regulator is saying, okay, the voltage is uh, too low, let me turn the transistor on. It bang, turns that transistor on, and then it goes too high, and then it turns the transistor off and waits. So it's got this bang, this banging type of thing going on here. But it kind of starts to tell me that maybe there's a little bit too much delay in this loop, right? Because by the time we turn the transistor on, by the time that voltage feeds all the way back and gets back to the regulator, it's already gone too far, so it shut, has to shut off hard and wait for the you know, the current or the voltage to get bled off of the output filter caps. So, in studying the design a little bit, I actually pulled up the data sheet for, uh, you know, for this part. It's a Mitsubishi part and looked at it a little bit. And in the data sheet, they also talk about this capacitor right here as a, uh, um, you know, as kind of an optional thing to, you know, improve ripple rejection and things like that and lower noise a little bit. 
But you know, in going through this, trying to figure out what was going on, I was checking for faulty parts. And I thought, well, you know, it's possible for one reason or another, maybe that capacitor is adding too much delay. That uh, the voltage changes or, or it's just causing enough of a delay in that feedback loop to create some, enough phase shift so that at this 700 kilohertz I'm getting this oscillation. So uh, what I wound up doing was, you know, going in and uh, that cap is sitting right here. Okay. I actually removed that cap and I was going to just check. I tested it and it still looked okay. I tried replacing it with a different value just to see if the characteristics would change. But what I found out is, you know, since the cap is optional, I said, well, let me just remove it and see what happens here. And, uh, and lo and behold, I've got this cap kind of just pushed in the holes right now because it's unsoldered. So let's take a look at the output of the spectrum analyzer. Okay, I'm going to put the camera up over there. I'm going to reach down into this board and yank this capacitor out of the circuit. Right, so I get a hold of it. There we go. I just grabbed that capacitor. It's out of the circuit now. That uh, 700 kilohertz oscillation is completely gone. And uh, so the regulator is regulating cleanly. Okay. We go and look with uh, my voltmeter at the 17 volt test point. I'm sitting at 17.01 volts. Okay. And if I look at the minus 17 volt uh, test point down here, okay, that's right down there. That's minus 16.99. That's uh, pretty darn close. So the regulator is doing what it ought to now. I can see that the control voltage is now nice and quiet. Okay. And if we take my signal now out of here and bring it back into the scope where we were doing that double triggering before. Okay. And uh, let's go uh, look at that signal. I'm not double triggering anymore. Now it all looks nice and clean. So, you know. For whatever reason, whether it's just a, uh, a fault in the design originally, or that maybe something has changed in that uh, little voltage regulator I see down there that it doesn't tolerate that delay uh, in that loop anymore, you know, in this in the circuit here. Whatever the case may be, by removing that, we've made the uh, the regulator nice and stable. Maybe it's got a little more noise on it uh, because, uh, you know the recommendation for that cap to lower the noise a little bit but gee I'll tell you whatever noise it's probably adding by not having that cap it's certainly a lot less than the noise it was adding from the oscillation so anyway simple uh, kind of an interesting repair story here that uh, still remains a little bit of a mystery of what changed and why that uh, why that doesn't work because I'm going to assume that uh, you know leader did a good job when they designed this thing but uh, something changed about uh, the regulator or something else that uh, that caused it not to like that uh, um, you know that capacitor in there. And I went so far as changing uh, that pass transistor, which is that guy right there. I, I substituted another one in that I had uh, that's actually connected up through this little jumper cable here. So I actually disconnected this and I jumpered in another known good transistor, and I had the exact same behavior. So I kind of concluded that transistor was okay. So uh, a little bit strange. But uh, it was kind of an interesting repair, and it was kind of solved that noise problem that I had on my, uh, my function generator. So, anyway, thought that would be a neat little uh, follow-up video.